Hi, welcome to Great Lakes Now. I'm Natasha Blakely, the news director, and with me today is Mayor Emily Larson from Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome back. Hi, great to see you. Well, I said welcome back because you were part of a segment and watch party during the summer of 2021. Our program aired a segment about the resiliency efforts along the waterfront in Duluth that are much like what's happening in many Great Lakes communities. Uh, Those were done to improve infrastructure, battle climate change, but they also improve quality of life there. Is that right? Yes. Can you describe for me the waterfront improvements in uh, your Lake Superior City? The project is awesome. It has held up beautifully. We, of course, are kind of in the beginning stages of a winter season here. We have not had the challenge of the kind of first huge blizzard that we would normally have had by now, but we have had a lot of challenging weather come our way and it's holding up beautifully. It is gorgeous. It is very popular. People are so happy with it. And I'm so proud of this community for knowing and choosing this path for the preservation of access and the inclusion of resiliency. You know, you mentioned just now uh, there had been some storms. Were those the gales of November? Yeah. Or, you know, what did you kind of see in terms of weather in Duluth this year? Yeah, well, do we really know anymore? I mean, so Minnesota right now is today, you know, the day that we are recording this, we are actually expecting a December tornado in the state. And this kind of weather pattern, it's actually very interesting to talk to you on a day like today. The weather we are seeing today is completely out of line and out of sync with what we see. And I do believe that that is climate change in action. Uh, typically, we would have, we've had one big snowfall and a, a, a you know, kind of a, a wind storm that went with that, but nothing as catastrophic as we would typically see. Um, but we are, uh, we did do really well through some fall storms and some of those gales of November when those winds get up to you know, just below, some of those were just below hurricane force. Um, But I I will say every time we have had a big storm, I, afterwards, when it's safe, I rush down to check and see how it's doing. And it's, there it is. It's just standing. It's just steady and gorgeous and doing its job. The initial view and, and experience we had with that project was really about reclamation of damage and reclaiming the space, it became about much more. Um, And, you know, we talked about that previously, but it really became about continuing to prioritize public access, free access to the Great Lakes, which is really special and important. It was about preserving the public infrastructure that is all along all of that lake walk, whether it's sewer, stormwater infrastructure, uh, like streets, and supporting the economic development and private investment that happens around, around that whole area. You know, you mentioned families and the public. So can you tell me a bit more about how Duluth residents have uh, responded to these changes? Yeah, they have been wonderfully on board. You know, a project like this is not inexpensive. We've talked about the price tags uh, before. They are very complicated to fund because it isn't just a city's responsibility. We put in money and we put in some some investment, but you're talking about the Corps of Engineers, the Department of Natural Resources, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, bonding from the state legislature is very complicated. And the overall price tag is really, really high. And, you know, often when that happens in government, people have feelings about how we spend money and what that looks like and whether something's worth it or not. And, you know, here in Duluth, our public never had significant resistance to that. There would be some outliers around, maybe we should just completely abandon, which is not the intersection we're at um, conversationally. But really for the most part, it was, I wouldn't say it was a slam dunk no brainer, but it was like, that's our identity. And if we can preserve the access and identity and economic development and do so in a way that is really climate forward, that's the lane for our community. And People were completely on board. We actually did a dedicated property tax increase just to go to the Lake Walk restoration and literally zero, zero pushback on that from the public. And our public is very engaged here. They show up to every public meeting and they are very clear in what their expectations and concerns are. 
So, you know, is the lake walk finished for now or are there still improvements that uh, the city is working on or looking to? Yeah, we're always making improvements. We, um, the lake walk itself is about a seven mile stretch, really a continuous stretch around the lake um, with some exceptions in terms of geography and erosion and things like that. Um, but it, it finishes at a place called Brighton Beach, which is a gorgeous, really important park. And it itself is about a mile long park. And so we are actually redoing that entire park because of climate change, climate adaptation, significant erosion. And again, has tremendous support. There's, there's not been any questions or concerns that we do the work we need to be doing here. I think part of it is we've really spoken clearly and uh, done our research around why building an adaptation makes sense and why that's a smart investment. And the community has gone there with us. So we really appreciate their trust. Kind of along those lines, how does your office kind of approach the idea of stewardship of the Great Lakes in the community? So in terms of how we consider stewardship with, with the Great Lakes, you know, I do participate in some national and international groups, um, international being with Canada, who are focused on the Great Lakes, that are focused on different areas. I'm, I'm now also on a National League of Cities, federal policy committee around environment, energy, natural resources. And then we also, it's almost like we specifically staff the Great Lakes in some ways because we do have a sustainability coordinator and officer with the city of Duluth that is tracking all things that relate to sustainability um, and renewable energy and lake temperature, things like that. And then also our, our parks maintenance and facilities team is the one that led the lake walk restoration. And so, you know, we see our stewardship of the lake being really a core part of our mission and vision as a city. It's, you know, it's a beautiful trademark who we are, this lake, but it's, it is also a very palpable spiritual experience to live near it. And people have a deeply personal connection to water, what it means, how it feels, how you use it, um, and access to it. So for us, stewardship is non-negotiable. It's what we do. Mayor Emily Larson, thank you so much for being part of Great Lakes Now. Thank you so much. This was super fun. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.